right, let's talk about adding and subtracting integers. This is one of my favorite topics, so I wanna give you some ideas for really making it interesting and helping students understand what they're doing. I know a lot of teachers say their students forget the rules or they get crazy answers. And what I think it really goes back to is do they have a firm understanding when they start out of what positives and negatives are, how they relate, how they compare, and then do they understand what they're doing when they're operating with them? I'm gonna give you some ideas of what you can do to get students engaged in thinking about integers. I'm gonna use one of my favorite tools back here. It's a vertical number line. This one specifically relates to C level, and I think your students could have some fun with it. Anytime students are introduced to a new type of number, we need to be sure that they understand what that number represents. And with negatives, a really good way is to bring in some real world context. Students usually encounter negative numbers in sixth grade in the curriculum, but they have been exposed to negatives before. So they come to us with a little bit of intuition but we need to build off that to really get a firm understanding so that they can move forward and do more advanced things with negative numbers. So let's take a look at this number line back here. This is representing C level. C level is at zero, and then we have our negative numbers below and positive above. Now we could pick whatever units. I'm gonna say um, that this is in meters today. You could change it up if you want to but we're gonna use these different sea creatures and kind of talk about what the negatives and positives represent so that students around sixth grade could build that understanding. We could place these animals at different spots and ask them things like, what is the value of the elevation of a certain sea creature? So we could say, what is the elevation or the altitude of the seagull? All right, we look at the number line here and we could see that he's 22 meters above sea level, and that's represented with a positive. Now let's say, what is the elevation of our clownfish? Well, he's below sea level. We can find that he's at the five, but now that we're below, we're gonna have to represent this as a negative. So getting students to just really think through that and think about where the positives are, where the negatives are, and see it, let's be sure that they know where they are before we move on. Then we get students to start comparing positives and negatives. So we could say, can you list the different elevations in order from greatest to least? Now looking at our number line here, that seems pretty simple to do. We could just start at the top and work our way down. We have the seagull at a positive 22, the dolphin at a positive two, clownfish at negative five, sea turtle at negative 25. But getting students to see that, see why they're in this order, will really help. Now, also in sixth grade, students start working with absolute value, which is kind of a funny concept. Why are we doing absolute value? Why are we making things positive? Is that what absolute value does? It just makes things positive? Well, a better way to explain absolute value is how far is a number from zero? Absolute value is usually used when we're talking about distances because distances are always expressed in a positive number. So if we get students to start thinking about a distance from sea level, we're introducing them to a real world context for absolute value. What is the distance of the clownfish from sea level? Well, he's five meters from sea level. What is the distance of the seagull from sea level? He's 22 meters from sea level. Now here's where we can make it a little bit more interesting. Can you list the animals in order of distance from sea level from greatest to least. So who is the farthest from sea level? And then students are having to think about the absolute value of these numbers. The farthest animal from sea level, we have the sea turtle, he's 25 meters below, the seagull's 22 meters above. Who is farther from sea level? Well, the sea turtle is. So in this case, the sea turtle will get listed first. So that's how we can get students to order the numbers thinking about do I need the absolute value or do I just want to order them based on the actual value. Now sixth grade students don't really start operating, but that doesn't mean they can't start thinking towards operating. So we don't want to just say, hey, what's negative four plus five, but we can start getting them to think about the distances here. We can start getting them to think about the relationships 
among the numbers. As they move into seventh grade, they're going to start operating with integers. And again, I think if we start with the real world context, it'll help students understand what they're doing. Students come with a lot of intuition about these numbers. So there are a lot of questions we can ask and they will operate with integers without realizing it and they'll get the correct answer. And if we go that route, it'll make a lot more sense when they get to those rules. So let's think about some things we could ask them. We could say, what's the distance between the dolphin and the seagull? And as they think through the operation they're doing there, subtraction. They might use that again when we ask something like, what's the distance between the clownfish and the sea turtle? Now we have negatives. And most likely if you ask students that question starting out, they'll just count it on here and that's fine. They're making sense of the math. What's the distance between the dolphin and the clownfish? Most students can look at this and tell you that answer. But if you were to give them two minus negative five when you start an integer lesson, how many would get it right? But they know how it works in context and this context will help them as they figure out how the operations all work together. By the way, this is in a new kit that I have that has the number line with sea level. It also has lots of different sea creatures and um, it also has some people swimming. It has some ships, some airplanes, all kinds of different things. And what I did was attach some little clothespins. So I'm going to show you some different things that you might do when you get to operating with integers. All right, let's talk about adding first. And we'll start with positives because students already know how to add positive numbers. But let's get them to think about that action on a number line. If a seagull is at 10 meters above sea level and he increases his altitude by five meters, where will he be? 15. And what operation did you do there? 10 plus five equals 15. So now let's try it underwater. <laughs> if an octopus is at negative 20, if he's 20 meters below sea level, and he increases his elevation by five meters, where will he be? 15 meters below sea level or negative 15. So negative 20 plus five is negative 15. And students are getting this image in their mind of moving up and down a number line. When you add, you move up. Let's say we have a dolphin at negative two meters, he's two meters below sea level, and he increases in elevation by five meters. <laughs> what did that dolphin do? Well, now he's at three meters above sea level. He must be jumping out of the water. So again, anytime we're adding a positive, we're moving up the number line. And then we can move on to subtracting a positive. I think this is the next a uh, very intuitive move to make on a number line. We can think about things moving up and moving down. Adding, we move up, and then subtracting, we move down. That's another reason I love vertical number lines. Even if we're not talking about sea level, just the vertical movement is just such a natural thing for students to think about. Sometimes the left to right does not come as easy, but up and down, we usually recognize as positive and negative or adding and subtracting. So this time if we have the octopus at negative 10 and he's going to descend his elevation, he's gonna sink five meters. We can see that he moves down to negative 15. Negative 10 minus five is negative 15. If we have the seagull up here, maybe he's at 20, 20 meters above sea level and he descends five meters well, he's at 15. 20 minus five is 15. We know that we move down. And then once students get that idea of this up and down movement, that is what really sets a good foundation for them to have a conceptual understanding of adding and subtracting integers. So where do we go from there? How about when we're adding a negative or subtracting a negative? Because so far we've only been adding and subtracting positives. Well, this is where we can take into account that mathematical practice of using patterns. When students recognize 
adding a positive moves up, what do they think should happen if we add a negative? Ask students to think about those situations. Ask them to think about if we move up the number line when we add a positive, what should we do if we add a negative? I think they'll use their intuition, they'll use the patterns they've been seeing to come up with a reasonable answer. If adding a positive means we move up, adding a negative means we move down. How about subtracting? When we subtract a positive, that's what we've done, you know, up until now in our mathematical lives, we've been subtracting positives. What did we do? We moved down. So what should we do if we're gonna subtract a negative? Taking the patterns we've already seen, if we're gonna subtract a negative, then we'll move up. And then we can go into conversations about why that's the opposite movement, or we could talk to them about additive inverses. At that point, there's a need for this vocabulary. Let's save that for when they realize the patterns, realize what's going on and have made sense of it. I think the majority of our time should be spent first on, do they understand the relationships between the numbers? That has to come first. And then do they understand that up and down movement? When we add positive numbers, we move up. When we subtract positive numbers, we move down. Start there, don't rush through that. That up and down movement on the number line will start to make sense to students. And you may ask, well, what about when it goes beyond 30? What do we do then? If you've worked with the number line for a while, then start using an open number line or just in your head, think about what if that seagull starts at 10 meters and moves up 50? Students can think about that and the same way they can think about with negatives. What about that octopus who starts at negative five and descends 300 meters? They can think about where that would lead them. So I think if we start with context and we give them something to visualize, that will build the conceptual understanding and they'll be able to move past it. It's not that they're gonna always need a number line, but this builds the foundation so that they can work with all kinds of numbers later. It's that idea if we go slow at first, they can go fast later. So I hope this gave you some ideas for what you can do with your students, whether you've taught it yet or maybe you might need to review a little bit. I think this will be pretty engaging to try with your students.